So uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Ole Wiborg from uh, Sion Pharma. And uh, Sion Pharma is a drug formulation company. We uh, have developed a platform for improving solubility and bioavailability of small molecule drugs. And we are on a, so here, we are on a mission to close an important gap between the discovery phase and the development phase. We are established as a spin-out of the University of Copenhagen in 2019. Today we have 14 people plus some consultants. We have uh, uh, it's a high-level labs in Copenhagen, and we have so far raised 7.4 million euros from private investors in 10 countries. In the first five years, we have come a long way. We have established uh, a number of very important partnerships with global pharma companies. In particular, we have a partnership with Hovione. That's one of the leading manufacturers in the world of the type of products we do. Uh, we have also our first marketing partner, Institute Pharma, a large generic company that's going to launch our first Dispersome product. I'll come back to that in a moment. And we also have several partnerships with large pharma companies. We are a very experienced and international management team, in addition to myself. Uh, I, we have a key inventor, Corbinian Lübmann, he's from Germany. We also have uh, Jakob Dünnes Hansen, he's a renowned CFO from the biotech industry. We have Wei Tian, who is uh, coming from Lonsa AG, one of the major uh, contract manufacturers. And then finally, we have Monica Gonzalez, that has a long track record in regulatory affairs. So together, we can actually both develop and launch uh, pharmaceutical products. So this technology platform we have developed, we term it Dispersomes. It's a, a platform that addresses a need that all companies they face in the pharma industry when they go from discovery to development. Small molecule drugs are notoriously uh, poorly soluble, and in order to get them to be taken up by the uh, organism, you need to make them soluble. So what add we, do we add here? Because this is, of course, not a new problem. But what we can see with our technology is you get a higher solubility, you get a higher bioavailability, you can reduce the dose, and you can actually, by doing this, both enable completely new drugs to get to the market, and you can improve a lot of the existing products on the market. So the technology, just briefly to explain it, is very simple, much simpler than every other science uh, presentation here. We combine drug molecules with a protein called beta-lactoglobulin, BLG, coming from other food ingredients. And then we make these nice disposomes. And they are amorphous structures where you both have the nice feature that you stabilize the drug and you increase solubility at least five times. We have tested it on about 60 drugs with high, very, very good results. We um, have uh, upscaled the technology. We are manufacturing now the second GMP product. And we have done more than 20 animal studies ourselves and our partners. And we recently published the first human data from this technology. So it's validated all the way to the market. To, to demonstrate how it works in real life, I made a small video. On the left-hand side, you have a dispersome formulation, 50% drug, 50% protein. And as you can see here, it's completely soluble. When you then take the drug alone, the same amount, it doesn't matter how much you steer it, it's actually not soluble. So that's the difference we make. And that uh, will mean a lot to companies in this sector. So we have also compared it to the sta state of the art, uh, the, the current technologies. And what we can see without going into details is that when you have the crystalline drug, yes, I don't know that. It's uh, completely insoluble. You can add uh, commercial, state-of-art uh, technologies, and then you can add the dispersomes. And what we can do is we can both improve the drug loading and we can improve the bioavailability. So in, ma in many, not all cases, but in many cases, we are just outperforming what is out there. And this, of course, has a number of uh, say benefits, and that's why we also see a large uh, interest from the industry. The human study we did here, actually one of our partners did this, was aimed to compare an existing product, uh, the bioequivalents, to uh, a Calideco here. That's a product for cystic uh, fibrosis. And we have prepared uh, formulations that should match this plasma profile over 72 hours. And the first uh, dispersome formulation matched almost a little better, actually. And the second one was completely on par with this. So this just it shows that we can do products, we can make products that are, um, say, uh, possible to market in, in this uh, field. We have also shown for an existing metastatic pro uh, prostate cancer product, abiraterone, that we can reduce dose by 75% 
On the right hand side, you see the results from a dog study. The black one is our dispersome formulation. And the idea or the intention was to match it with the red one. It was much better. So instead of reducing the dose by 50%, we can actually reduce it by 75%. This means that for the patients, you have instead of four tablets per day, you can just take one. So I think this is very uh, illustrative of what we can do, and therefore there's interest from a lot of companies, both for new drugs and existing drugs. We have a very strong and dominating IP position. We are, have currently five patent families that we control. Two of them are licensed from the uh, University of Copenhagen, one from a company called Oslo in uh, the Netherlands, and we have already granted patents in most countries in the world. The beauty of the technology is, of course, that they can be used in so many fields. For marketed drugs, there's a number of drugs that suffer from poor solubility. For new drugs, a market that's growing in our field by $50 billion every year. We can use it for nutraceuticals. We have shown that we are more competitive than any of the products in certain, for certain supplements. And it's also used for nasal inhalation drugs. And for the latter two parts, we have actually licensed this to Hovion. So they, they are investing heavily in developing this uh, part of the, of the drug, uh, of, of the technology. Based on what we have done so far, we have, let's say, a pipeline our own pipeline and a pipeline with partners. And uh, in the pharmaceutical field, we have a product called curcumin. That's a very large selling product where we have shown that this, our dispersion formulation is better than what's out there. Hovion is developing this product for, for us. Uh, we have a number of marketed products where we have, in particular in the, in the cannabinoid field, we have shown that we can make cannabinoid compounds soluble. We have this first product, your Kafta, being launched by Institute Pharma, and then we have another a number of other products in the marketed field. In addition, we have new drugs that where we work with partners, and these are typically uh, taking a long time to get to the states of clinical development, but we have some that are close to this. All these drugs uh, in their own right uh, are addressing very significant markets. So what do we expect then? Now we put some money on, and here, this is what we expect over the next 10 years. This may not look like billions, and that's also not realistic in my view. But what we see here is a, a, an expectation that we can reach a turnover in the order of magnitude of around $100 million between 2030 and 2035. When we risk adjust this, according to the book, we see it's smaller, but it's still a very significant turnover we can establish just by these projects that we have in pipeline this year and next year. We also have revenues today. These are not in, in, uh, in uh, euros, but they're in krona, unfortunately. Uh, but we have, since we started the second year, have uh, income from uh, our partnerships, both what we do in the lab, but also from license fees. So what are we out to, to do now? We like to uh, have more significant investment. So we can actually advance, in particular, our own formulations, because we think they have a very significant uh, market opportunity. So we are looking to raise up to 5 million euros. And this money will be spent mainly on advancing the pipeline, but also to uh, make the, the last, let's say, things ready so we can launch the technology and have it validated in the marketplace. That's going to open up a much broader application uh, by the pharma companies. because. Although they are interested in new technologies, they are also at the same time very reluctant to take it in. So what we will do for this money is then advance the pipeline. We will make sure the first products are going to the market. And we have a number of important milestones. Uh, this year, the first clinical data that's already met, we will have new patent products coming in. In 25, we will complete, our, our partner will complete the pivotal study on the first dispersome product and also hopefully submit a registration dossier. We will uh, then in 27 have the first regulatory approval of a dispersome product, and we plan to uh, have a, an IPO around 2026, uh, or even before if the market allows, but we want to raise not a few million euros, but a lot of money here to really exploit the potential both in this technology and additional technologies that we are uh, working with. So that is basically the presentation here. And, um, I'm happy to take both questions and money. Thank you so much. <laughs> okay.
We actually have a few questions for you. Okay, a lot. thank you. Okay, we'll Sounds go good. from the top. You yeah. aim, like you said, to develop improved cannabinoids. Yeah. Uh, cannabinoid. Cannabinoids. Thank you. With your partner, DSM, how is the clinical evalu uh, evaluation of the CBD formulation, formulation advancing? Well, uh, right now it's uh, not advancing that, far, that fast, as fast as we would like. Um, <laughs> but uh, we think we will be able to show uh, clinical data second quarter next year mm -hmm. from a cannabinoid formulation. Yeah, okay. So if that study is successful, will it uh, change your uh, the company's focus? Do you think? No, because I think even if it's uh, if the cannabinoids uh, are an interesting target for the technology, I think we have so many other, uh, let's say, potential drugs, and we are not focusing on the entire cannabinoid field, and that's a really, really um, weird market, unfortunately. <laughs> and and we are focusing only on the RX potential there. So we only go for drugs, and that market is in itself like three billion dollars uh, in a few years. So not uninteresting. Yeah. But but the, the whole point of what we're doing is really to exploit the technology uh, uh, in as many fields as we can. And if we cannot do it ourselves, we will do it through licensing with, with partners. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, have you seen indications of improved toxicity in cancer? Yes, we we uh, will not improve toxicity <laughs> because I think well, I we, think you get we, yeah, yeah, get the point. Yeah, no, yeah. I think <laughs> what what we see with the technology and and we cannot conclude anything yet. But what we see is that when we use it, we actually reduce the the variability between patients. So uh, in when you have. Uh, Typically, drugs, they will have a large variation from one patient to the other one, the plasma concentration. And when we use the, the, the dispersion technology, they tend to be lower, the variability. And what does this mean? It means that you can actually expand the therapeutic window. So you will have, a, you'll be able to increase the dose, and you will also be able to avoid some of the side effects. But you cannot make this kind of claims unless you have uh, shown it in a clinical study. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah. Can wait. Um, what if any big decisions or crossroads lie ahead if we speak about 12 months? Uh, well, uh, in addition to the fundraising, we have, um, I think, we have not uh, any major uh, things. But what we are doing right now is really focusing on getting more partners in, more projects in, because at the end of the day, timing is everything. The, the more we can exploit the technology in the, in the time window we have, the better. So we are working hard on getting both uh, mid-sized and large companies in as partners. Mm -hmm. Last questions that we have, at least digitally. Um, what is the pre-money valuation? Ha. Huh. Well, who asked that question? Not me. <laughs> <laughs> now, I, I, will not, uh, I will not comment on that right now, but um, I would say that if we're going to do an IPO, uh, we, would, we would target a pre-money in the order of 75 to 100 million euros. So, so that's the target. Then you can calculate back. <laughs> we will. Are there any more questions in the room? Yes, please. Yes. <laughs> Well, uh, yeah. uh, I will repeat the yeah. question. Uh, what alternative exit routes do you see? Just yeah. for the camera also, so we yeah. can hear it. I, I think the IPO route is actually a very interesting one for us because it, we have not only uh, one product or two products, we have a number of products. So, and since the technology is already validated, we, uh, we have you know, Hovione working with their field. There's no doubt that we will play a significant role in this market. So that's why I think the IPO route is really interesting for us. Having said that, you have seen acquisitions uh, of a company like ours. For example, Novo Nordisk, they acquired a company some years ago that contributed to the, some of the, the GLP-1 analogs and, uh, for 11 billion Danish kroner. So there are, of course, opportunities. I also see that there are opportunities to increase not, not do a merger as such, but actually increase the potential of the value in the company by working very, very close with other companies. So we are not looking to, to sell the company, but of course, if someone comes and, and asks, we will consider it. Right? Great. I think that will uh, um, end our time here. Thank you so much, Ole Viborg, Sirion Pharma.